we should already know from lesson one and two what a covalent bond is. Covalent bonds form between non-metal atoms which share their valence electrons to form a complete outer shell. What we can see from the covalent sharing diagram is in the overlap between the orbitals, we have a pair of shared electrons. That is known as a covalent bond. The first shape that we're going to look at is linear. And this is when atoms are arranged in a straight line of 180 degrees. The central atom has one bond to another atom. It's almost going from point A to point B. The first example we're going to look at is hydrogen. Hydrogen has the electron arrangement one and the electron is found in the first energy level. We already know that in the first energy level to achieve stability, it needs to have a maximum of two electrons. Hence why it will share a pair of electrons with another hydrogen atom to achieve stability. What we can see is in the covalent sharing diagram, we have a pair of electrons that represents our covalent bond. And to simplify that, when we're drawing the shape of the molecule, we just draw a line between the atoms. We can see that the colour of the atom remains the same, which represents the same type of element bonded to one another. We want to change this pictorial to H line H. This is the way that we would represent the shape of a hydrogen molecule, showing that the bond is linear. Different elements, however, can form covalent bonds. Let's take hydrogen fluoride, for example. The covalent sharing diagram for hydrogen fluoride is HF. We can see that we've got one shared pair of electrons and one covalent bond. The pictorial version of this, we would have one pink atom and one green atom. The colours represent the different types of elements. However, when we're drawing this out, we would draw H line F. This is the way that we would show the linear structure of hydrogen fluoride. Now with those two examples, we can clearly see that there's only one shared pair of electrons. There is a really, really tricky one that we need to make sure that we know about. And hence why it's really important to be able to be comfortable with drawing the covalent sharing diagrams first, to be able to see the physical shape of how the atoms arrange around the central atom. This example is carbon dioxide. We can see from the covalent sharing diagram of carbon dioxide that we have an oxygen which has two bonds to the carbon atom. And on the other side, we also have an oxygen which has two bonds to the carbon atom. Drawing that pictorial, we're going to draw a blue circle, double bond pink circle, double bond blue circle. Again, if we were to represent that, we would write O double bond C double bond O. Although the carbon has four covalent bonds, the atoms are arranged in a straight line of 180 degrees. The second shape that we're going to focus on is when the central atom has two bonds. This is known as angular. This is when the atoms are arranged at a bent at an angle. What we can see here as an example is water. Oxygen is the central atom and we can see that it has two bonds with two different hydrogen atoms. It has two shared pairs of electrons, so therefore forms two covalent bonds. We can represent that by putting an oxygen as the pink central atom and showing two hydrogen atoms chemically joined. The lines represent the shared pair of electrons. This is the pictorial version. We need to remember that if we are going to draw this in an exam, we would do oxygen in the middle with two lines coming out and writing the chemical symbol for hydrogen, which is H. This is showing our angular. This is again when the central atom has two bonds that we're going to focus on for covalent molecular substances is trigonal pyramidal. The emphasis is on the word tri. 
Tri is a prefix, which means three. This tells us that the central atom forms three bonds with other atoms. An example of this is nitrogen hydride, which is more commonly known as ammonia. We can see from the covalent sharing diagram that we have three shared pairs of electrons between the nitrogen atom, which is the central atom, and the hydrogens which are attached. This represents the three covalent bonds. As a pictorial version, we can draw this as nitrogen as a central atom, which is the pink circle, which has three lines which represent the covalent bonds to hydrogen atoms. Remember, if we were drawing this in an exam, we would write the chemical symbol for N, draw our three lines and draw our hydrogen atoms. The last shape that we have to know for our covalent molecular substances is tetrahedral. The word tetra is the prefix for four, which means that the central atom forms four covalent bonds with other atoms. What we can see here is methane or carbon hydride as, as an example. We can see that the central atom is the carbon, which is represented pictorially with the pink circle. And we can see that we've got four overlaps, four shared pairs of electrons with hydrogen atoms which represent the green circles. What we have to be careful of is the angles when we are drawing this. We can see that we've got three which are at the bottom, which are similar to the angles of the trigonal pyramidal, but we've also got one straight bond going up. This is known as tetrahedral. A silly way to help you remember this weird word is to think about your four head but change the word for, for tetra, tetrahed, tetrahed, tetrahedral. Remember that we have to draw out the chemical symbols for the element, so we'll write a C in the middle, which represents the carbon. We'll draw our four bonds, and we will write the symbols for the hydrogen atoms. <laughs> This question is from the National 5 2017, written 3b. Chloromethane is a covalent gas with a faint sweet odour. The structure of a chloromethane molecule is shown. State the name used to describe the shape of a molecule of chloromethane. So we already know that the shape of a molecule is determined by the number of bonds that the central atom has. What we can see is that the central atom is carbon and it's got four lines coming out of the central atom, which means carbon has formed four covalent bonds. The prefix for four is tetra. Now, you might have been touching your head trying to think about what the name of this was called. It's the tricky one. You're touching your four heads, tetra head, tetrahed, if you are from Glasgow. So it is a tetrahedral structure. This past paper question is from the National 5 2018 Multiple Choice 4. The shapes of some molecules are shown below. The shape of a molecule of hydrogen bromide is likely to be. The issue that we've got here is we've got the word for the name of the molecule is hydrogen bromide. Chems don't work in words, we work in formula. So the first thing that we have to be able to do is work out the chemical formula for hydrogen bromide. We do that by doing our SVSDF. Symbol for hydrogen is H. It's found in group one, valency one. Bromine has the chemical symbol BR. It's found in group seven, valency one. We swap the valencies over Highest number both can be divided by is 1, which means that the chemical formula is HBr. What we can see is from the valency of the central atom, when we've only got two, we always ignore the hydrogen. The valency is 1. So if the central atom is bromine and it only forms one bond, it's going to have a linear structure. To double check this, I'm just going to draw the covalent sharing diagram of hydrogen bromide. What I can see is I've got one overlap, which represents the one covalent bond. So therefore, the shape of the molecule of hydrogen bromide is most likely to be linear 
multiple choice answer D. This past paper questions from the National 5 2014 written 11C. The chlorine gas produced can be used to make phosgene, which has the formula COCl2. Phosgene is used in the manufacture of drugs and plastics. Draw a possible structure. The first step we have to do is identify the formula that it's given us in the question. The formula is COCl2. Carbon is found in group 4, oxygen in group 6, chlorine in group 7. The valency of carbon is 4, the valency of oxygen is 2, and chlorine is 1. We circle the one with the highest valency. The electron arrangement of carbon is 2, 4. The outermost occupied energy level is the second energy level, so we're going to draw a petal. Now, because we've got an oxygen present in the formula, we're going to put the petal on its side and we pop in the four outer electrons. The next element along, which has the next highest valency, is oxygen. It has the electron arrangement 2, 6. The outermost occupied energy level is the second energy level. So what we're going to do there is we're going to overlap two of the petals from the carbon atom with two of the petals from the oxygen atom. We're going to pop in our six electrons, making sure they sit singly before they double up. The chlorine has the chemical symbol Cl and has the electron arrangement 2, 8, 7. The outer most occupied energy level is the third energy level, which means we're going to draw a petal diagram. We overlap one of the orbitals with an unpaired electron and we pop in our seven outer electrons. What we can see from the formula is that we have a second chlorine. We still have an unpaired electron found in the central carbon atom. So we draw an another overlap with a new petal. We pop in those seven outer electrons. This question doesn't ask for the covalent sharing diagram, but this is the step that I would always use to make sure that you have got the correct structure. What we want to draw is we want to draw this in a pictorial version. So let's use the circles that we'd used in the examples prior. We've got a blue circle which represents the carbon atom. We can see that it has a double bond. It's got two shared pairs of electrons with the oxygen atom, which I'm representing with a black atom. We can also see that it has two single bonds with two separate chlorine atoms. However, we have to make sure that we write this down using the chemical symbols. So we'll have C, double bond O, and the carbon has two other bonds coming out with chlorine atoms which have the chemical symbol CL. I personally would class this as an A mark style question. There's a lot of problem solving and higher order thinking, but by following the strategies that I have shown you and putting in place, it shows you an easy way to represent and be able to follow a structured programme to be able to get the right answer.